Hi there, this is Marhadad here again. In this lecture, I have to start configuring the Unify Access Point. So all what we have done is to prepare everything until this point to start configuring the Unify Access Point. So this lecture is, we are going to do a lab, which is about five points. But before I start doing those uh, points, let me just explain to you what we need to do in this lab. Then we come back to the points and start doing them. So we are still on the same lab scenario. Remember, when we were working on Router 1, we made it as DHCP server. And we said that it's going to give IP addresses of 10.30.30. something. Okay. Now, what we have done, we put the, here the controller. And now the access point is adopted to the controller. We need to configure the access point. Now let's think of something. What do we need to really configure on the access point? just to be able to provide internet now wirelessly to the users who have, for example, smartphones or mobile or, uh, or tablets or, or even PCs or anything which needs to connect to the wireless. So the only thing that we need to configure now is to just make the wireless on the access point enabled. So we just need to put uh, the SSID, which is the name of the wireless. So you know that when you want to connect to a wireless network, you see the name and you connect to it. So that's what we call it the SSID. SSID means service set identifier. So we need to create that. We need to put a password, a passphrase. So in case anyone connect to us, it doesn't get directly authenticated and associated to, to the wireless. We need to make a security. So we need to put here a password. That's another thing. And also what we have to think if we are going to use the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz, all we want to use one of those. And also what, which of the band that we need to use. So that's something. So if you want, we can put here band. So those are the main things that we have to think of in order to allow the users to go connected to wireless and to have internet. We don't want to create a DHCP server here because this access point do not have the HTTP server capability. So it cannot give IP addresses to users and it cannot do the NAT. It needs to have a router behind it. And the router which is behind it in this case is router one. That's the one which is making the DHCP and making the NAT. Now, if you want to use just Ubiquiti devices, and then in this case, you can use what we call the router USG. Ubiquiti Security Gateway. That's a router which uh, you can put it in place of Router 1 and it has the functionality of uh, what Router 1 is doing. But of course, it is somehow limited. So normally the Microtech router, on uh, which is uh, here in this case Router 1, has much more things you can do on the Microtech router than what you can do on the uh, USG. The USG can do the NAT, of course, can do for you the uh, DHCP server. But yeah, if you want to do some advanced firewalling, if you want to do some advanced quality of servers, if you want to do, for example, I don't know, maybe routing or something like this, then the uh, router of the Microtech is more advanced. But the USG has something very important and very good. It's the DPI, Deep Packet Inspection. That's to be able to see what the users are doing as traffic. We can see if they're using Facebook or YouTube or just browsing or email, all this will be shown and that's if we use the usg that's the only thing that i can say that if you really want to use usg go for it in case you want to use the dpi so now back to the lab what we need to do is just the wireless part on the access point that's what we need to configure and then in this case we can share the internet using the wireless so what i'm going to do after that I'm going to take my phone and I will try to connect it to the wireless, which will be propagated from this access point. And then I will see if it's going to be connected and has internet. So this is the whole idea of this lab. Let's go back now to the points and start doing them. Point number one, log in into the controller, go to devices and change the name of the Unify to AP1. So let's go here and then we go to devices and we go to here. And how to change the name is you go to general on the alias. I just want to name it AP1 because now it has this name, Unify AP AC Light. So we just change the name and then I will say here save. And now you can see that the name has changed to API and it's again provisioning. Okay, so that's what I will have to always remember that once you do some configuration, then directly it will go to provisioning and this will also take some time. But for now, it's a lab. That's not a problem. So let's uh, go back now to see what we have to do in the upcoming point. Point number one is done. Point number two, go to settings and create a wireless network with SSID. So the SSID that we need to create is having uh, the name Unify AP and we have to put the password, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven eight and we are gonna use the w PA personal. So of course, uh, this is just a simple password. Don't use this password if you are working on the production network, but just because it's a lab, I'm going to use this password now. So let's go to the controller again. So this is the controller. We see it's connected now. So now to configure the wireless, what I need to do is to go to settings, which is over here. So I click on settings. And now we need to go to the wise. Of course, we have a lot of things we can do more than what I'm showing you in this course, because this course is just a basic one. So I, I cannot go to all the details. But again, I'm going to do a course which shows everything what you can do using the Unify. All right. Now let's uh, focus on the wireless. I'll go to the wireless network. Now on the wireless network, you can create what we call what we call the WLAN group. So there is a WLAN group, which is the default one. Well, I'm going to use the default one because again, this is a basic course. I'm not going to speak now what is the RDWLAN group. So I will create here a, a new wireless on the WLAN group default. And then I will click here on it. And they said the name, which is the name of the wireless should be Unify AP. And now we need to enable this wireless network. Yes, I will keep it checked. And the security, is it open without any password? No. WPA personal, yes. WPA enterprise, no, because this one required for you to have a radio server. So I would just choose this one, WPA personal. And the security key, you have to put eight characters, a minimum. Okay, so I will just make it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if you want, we can click on this one. You can see that's the password. And that's what I need to do only. And then here I can say save. So I have created now the wireless network. Point number two is done. So we created the wireless network, but now we need to apply this to the access point, which is AP1. Apply the wireless network to AP1. So we go again here, and now we have to go to the devices. And we go to the device over here. And now we go to the configuration of this access point. So we go to config and we go down over here. We have to go to WLAN. And by default, because there is only one uh, network or wireless network that we have, then it will directly, you can see it has taken it. So you see Unify AP, Unify AP. So it has already these uh, settings and uh, that's uh, on the 2.4 gigahertz on the 2 gigahertz and on the 5 gigahertz because this access point can work on the 2.4 gigahertz and it can work on the 5 gigahertz so the ssid which is unify ap which has a password of one two three four five six seven eight will work on the two radio the 2 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz so if you have a device which works only two on the 2 gigahertz you can connect to this access point if you have some uh, device which works on the five only can also connect to this access point. But also if you have a device which works on both, that can also connect to any of those uh, band. But of course, there is an option on the access point here on the ubiquity. You can say that you will prefer on uh, the five gigahertz in case, for example, the phone has 2.4 and five gigahertz and this access point has both. Then you can say that if this device has the both the two bands, then I would prefer that he works on the five gigahertz because there is more bands on the five gigahertz. Point number three is done. Now, point number four, we have to go to the phone and try to connect to this new SSID Unify access point and to see if the phone is connected to the internet. So I have my phone over here. So uh, this is uh, my phone. Let me just move it like this. And we can see directly on the Wi-Fi there is Unify access point. You can see it. So if I click on it, it will ask for the password. I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, you can see that I have put already the password. And now we go to the, uh, again here, we put the password and we go to connect, click on connect. And let's have a look. Yes, it is connected. Very good. So now I'm connected. So what IP address uh, did I get? So if you want, we can check here. This is the IP address you can see is 10.30.30.251. Remember, 10.30.30. something is coming from the router, from the Mikrotik router that I have configured. Okay, so, so far so good. My phone is now connected to the internet and everything is working perfectly. Point number four is done. Point number five checks from the controller if your phone is connected to the wireless. Before I do that, let me just show you that my phone is connected to the internet. If I ping now to 8.8.8.8, I make ping, you can see that I have a reply. And uh, you can see that I'm still on the Unify access point. So uh, 
go open uh, by mistake I have uh, closed the wireless so let's open it again and uh, yes I'm on uh, Unify now and uh, you can see I'm still connected there and uh, if I go to the ping let's stop it I do ping again you can see that I am connected to the internet without any problem so they're saying now that uh, yeah as you are connected to the internet then this phone is a client and you should see that on the client on the on the controller so uh, before I do that, I would first would like to show you that if we go to the Winbox, this Winbox here, and uh, from uh, the Winbox, uh, I go to the router one. So this is router one, and I connect to it. Yes, we can see that it has received uh, this phone an IP 10.30.30.251. That is my Galaxy Note 8 phone. So you can see that the access point itself doesn't give the IP address. It's the router which is behind of it. All right, now let's go to the controller. And we see there is one client. You can see this one, it's one client. And here we go. It's showing to me that there is a one client, which is Galaxy Note 8, and this is the IP address. So if you want, you can go to the client and you can see more information about uh, this client. Uh, so for example, the statistics, what this uh, is doing now this the deep packet inspection this is enabled in case you are using a router which is usg from ubiquity but because we are not using the usg then we cannot inspect the packets of uh, this device and here also the device fingerprint you get some information like the mac address what is the manufacturer and so forth so yeah yeah congratulations we have the wireless app and running using ubiquity unify access point point number five is done and with this point, I have showed you what you only need to do on the, the Unify to be able to provide wireless to your users. So you can see it's not a lot of things that you need to do. You just need to configure the uh, wireless, the SSID. You put the password. You say that you want to use the WPA and that's it. And the, the rest is just you connect to the wireless and it works. Now, again, there are a lot of more things that you can do on the Ubiquiti, but they don't come into this course. Another course, which I'm planning to do, which will take all the things that you can do on Ubiquiti. And there are really a lot of nice and special things that you can use on the Unify Ubiquiti products. So this is what I wanted to show you in this lecture. I hope it was informative for you and I will see you in the upcoming lecture.